the NFL preseason kickoff. Raiders, Jaguars, who you got? But there is an issue with the silver and black. Hunter Renfro was in charge of booking the Uber for Derek Carr, Devontae Adams. It did not go well. It was Hunter Renfro's side. Adams says he will not let Renfro be in charge again. Let's go around that horn. Put out my rating above four. Lively face, I'm sure. Yeah, who do you think has the lowest Uber rating on this show? Pablo Torres. I, I, I've been in Roger Hunt for a while. We start with global news story of the day. Brittany Griner, her trial for drug possession in Russia completed this morning, returning a guilty verdict, and she was sentenced to nine years in Russian prison. All reporting that this was expected, but it's a sentence and a reality. We have never had to come across with an American professional athlete. Months and months of mystery and complexity. The U.S. State Department declaring wrongful detainment. Griner pleading guilty. And the report and intention of a multiple prisoner swap. All in a country at war and a fear Griner was being used as a political chip. President Biden today releasing a statement. Once again, calling it wrongful detainment. Says... Uh, there should be an immediate release, and he will pursue every avenue to return Griner and Paul Whelan, another political prisoner in Russia, home. Pablo Torre, you've devoted much time on The Daily trying to find understanding in this case from the start, where yeah. we are with this news today. Griner pronounced guilty, sentenced to nine years in prison. Yeah, Tony, this is an unprecedented sports story, as you alluded to, that is really a global news story that has a sports component because this whole story still, the question still of when is Brittany Griner going to get to come back to the United States is premised on a trade. It is a sports concept that is actually very much the story of this geopolitical struggle. We can talk about the Russian justice system, which is really a theatrical exercise here because this is a justice system where 99%, more than that actually, of the people who get prosecuted are convicted. Brittany Griner knew that, pled guilty, regardless of the actual reality of her case, because she knew that the negotiation, the prisoner swap, the trade, cannot actually begin in earnest until she is sentenced. So this is a terrifying headline with a silver lining, which is merely this procedurally. Now the story can advance. Now we can discuss whether they're going to trade the so-called merchant of death, Victor Boot, for Griner, for Paul Whelan, all of the sports dystopia trade stuff is now about to begin. And you said now we are going to say, I, I would caution and hesitate to do that because that relies on us knowing an unknowable, right? Diplomatic negotiation and things that I know while we're reading up on this and the information has been slow to come by, we are certainly not expert at doing that. But Kevin Blackstone, let me ask you this. You've covered sports for, the, for four decades. The idea an American professional athlete was just sentenced to nine years in prison overseas. Yeah, I mean, that's a, every time I see a video of uh, Brittany Griner being hauled in and out of that courtroom, uh, it's always kind of, it's just kind of heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, what strikes me is that not, not too far from the White House in the neighborhood of Georgetown, there's an alley. <clears throat> and back earlier this summer, someone painted, I uh, forget the artist, but he painted uh, a mural there of 18 faces. And there are 18 people who uh, the U.S. government says are being wrongfully detained uh, somewhere overseas. And one of those pictures is, is a Brittany Griner. And so, you know, for me, this isn't a sports story. And for me, being locked up abroad is not, you know, reality TV entertainment. Mm -hmm. um, you, know, this is, you know, this is real. And, and we rarely see it like we've seen it with Brittany Griner. If, and if anything, you know, people are talking about uh, this, this issue. You know, you just saw Trevor Reed come home after serving three years of a nine-year sentence. Um, he was a Marine who was over in Russia. And now we see Brittany Griner um, sentence, and we know about Whalen being there, and we know about these others. In fact, there may be some 60 um, U.S. citizens uh, detained right now over broad, uh, abroad um, uh, across the world um, who the U.S. government is trying to get home. So uh, it's just a difficult situation, and, and I don't know what to make of what happened mm -hmm. today in terms of what that means for tomorrow. Okay. Isaac Campbell, the name of that, that great artist you're speaking of uh, in the Georgetown section Thank of you. Washington, D.C., with the mural. Israel Gutierrez? 
It's devastating news, but it's always been terrifying for Britney, or if you put yourself in Britney Griner's space, which is why, you know, you hear or see little people, or you know, a few people suggesting here and there, hey, she's not a political prisoner. She is just a, a prisoner in, in Russia, and this is the, the, you know, the judicial system there. And, and that's obviously untrue. But regardless of that, just put somebody that you love or somebody that you like in that place and watch them do everything they're supposed to do. Watch them cooperate. Watch them plead guilty and watch them speak openly about not wanting to in court, not wanting to affect the Russian people and apologizing and doing everything right, but still nearly getting the full uh, 10 years re of requested sentence there. Obviously, she only got nine, uh, including the time served there. But doing all that and just envisioning spending another decade in a prison on foreign soil, it's just, it's absolutely heartbreaking and absolutely terrifying. So anybody who thinks of this as anything other than a political move by Russia is being entirely naive. And Courtney Cronin. The sentence went as expected based on the trial going as expected, based on Brittany Griner pleading guilty going as expected because of the system in which she's being held right now. And on top of that, her sentencing, Russia had to make her sound as diabolical as possible because of the type of individuals it is asking back for, a convicted murderer and an arms dealer in exchange for Brittany Griner and Paul Whelan. So, at the end of the day, I think it's you've got to bring this back to having empathy. I know some people want to mock Brittany Griner for her stance on the national anthem in 2020. Imagine if that's your favorite athlete, if that's one of your loved ones locked up overseas who's been in a jail cell for the last five and a half months and then finds out today that they have a nine-year sentence in a foreign country. How would you feel? Pablo Torre, one last word. Yeah, to me, Tony, this is not about, oh, look at this athlete who deserves special treatment. This is about, look at this American citizen, as KB was alluding to, who is trapped under an autocratic regime who needs the help of her government. And this is a story that's about a lot of other people, a lot of other people unjustly held abroad. And Brittany Griner gives us an excuse to actually address some matters through sports in that way. Brittany Griner. Found guilty and sentenced to nine years in Russian prison today. It's the news of the day. There's no easy way to move on from that story, but thank you for your thoughts. In baseball last night, we got a look, our first look, at the new Padres. 9-1 over the Rockies. So Juan Soto in his debut, one for three, two walks. It was Brandon Drury's first game, and he was mashing. A grand slam, and then Machado and Cronenworth, home runs, and Blake Snell found his group. Kevin, what can you take away from a first game together when a first game together goes like that? Man, Soto looks horrible in those colors. Oh, yeah? Do you think looked so? Much he better. Oh, he looks scoring. much better in red. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, boy, what can I make of that? They beat a lousy team that won 46 games, 10 more, I should say, than the team Soto was yeah. traded from, which is worst in the league, and, and they're out there raking, 9-1. Nine, nine to one. Um, This is what we should expect of the Padres for the rest of the year. Um, they're a top contender to get to the World Series. They're as dangerous a, a, a bunch of hitters as there is in, in, in baseball right now, and good for the Padres to make this deal and go all in for their fan base, unlike some other teams, uh, to, to ensure that their team is a winner and a and a, uh, pro and a uh, contender uh, for all the Pablo, marbles. can you react or overreact to one game? So, so this feels like KB's in the coping stage of grief, right? Is that one of them where you just sort of have to process how the future, you know, 24-year-old, soon-to-be Ted Williams just <laughs> evaporates from your life, KB? That must be hard because as much as he is a guy who is only hitting in the 250s right now, thereabouts, he is also a guy with a career 430 on base percentage. And yes, this is what we saw in this one game. It is one game only. But man, Tony, the bottom line, it feels good. It looks good to be a Padre right now. You play in San Diego, not in the swamp butt D.C. area that KB is representing. Okay, all right. And all yes, right. you have all of the hitters that you need. Congratulations. <laughs> Cordy Cronin. To that beautiful place of the planet. I learned that the rest of the lineup around Juan Soto should absolutely be feared. Let's think about some of their other new acquisitions. Brandon Drury, the first pick yeah. that he received as a Padre, <laughs> was a great grand start. slam. <laughs> Josh Bell got on, he got on base twice. He scored twice. Manny Machado was three of four with a home run. Juan Soto wasn't the star of the show as far as like his production in the game. Certainly, I loved seeing that fan base, which was a sellout crowd last night, revering him because they know they're on the cusp of something special and they know that the team is going all in to try to win a World Series. It looks like they've got a pretty good lineup around Juan Soto to at least start trending in the direction of that wild And Israel spot. Gutierrez. 
that all-in energy is palatable. And the thing that I love about it the most is that Juan Soto sat there, took in all that energy, and still did what he does, nothing. He sat there and took a walk twice. And because it's the patience <laughs> that he comes great. with, and obviously you've got nothing. nine <laughs> runs there, that result. But, like, you look at this San Diego team, and they could easily, probably won't catch L.A., but they could easily uh, get to that number one wild card spot. And they don't even have Fernando Tatis, who just saw some live pitching uh, recently for the second time. And so you've got him coming back, potentially. You've got Blake Snell in his last five starts, not only starting to pitch really well, but getting the run support. And this Padres team could be getting, you know, just to where they need need to be at the right time at the end of the season and that all in energy like I said that that could carry them for a while. Live pitching always better than the alternative. Okay so you thought that was it was palatable it was feeling <laughs> there was there was the ability to power. That's what you felt last night is Drew Gutierrez. Taking a break fire still awesome. next the Hall of Fame game tonight. Anybody playing in this game tonight going to the Hall of Fame? We'll see. <laughs> Those are Deshaun Watson punishment. Roger Goodell will now select who makes the final decision. It will not be himself nor anyone from league office. Mike Floro reports, but Courtney, how does this come off? And does this in any way change what you felt with Watson's punishment? It doesn't change what I feel about Watson's punishment because I expected the NFL to appeal those six games from the very start. Dating back to the disciplinary hearing in July, Sue L. Robinson alerted the NFL that they probably were not going to get the indefinite suspension that they had been seeking. And throughout this entire case, in her 16-page document, she tells them, you're right, you proved your case, but because of precedent, because of the language in the CBA that you set up, set, set up and ratified with the NFLPA, she wasn't able to give Deshaun Watson more than six games. Now, like Roger Goodell didn't want to be the judge, jury, and executioner. He didn't want the NFL to have that sort of power. But because this is an opportunity for Goodell and the NFL to change the language in the CBA and change that precedent, he had no other choice but to appeal this. And now he's going to have somebody else go Israel, in his place. Israel, is that how you that see decision. it? That the NFL doesn't want to be judge, jury, executioner? Yep. but they're happy to try it's a tricky middle ground because you, immediately when the ruling came out you, I said to myself they have to appeal this just for public image um, but it can't be Roger Goodell he can't take this opportunity and then be the, the the jury on this one and so when you are arguing against the judge Sue Robinson's ruling that hey she said precedent but that doesn't really uh, it doesn't really take place in this case well then you can do that and judge and argue that to another neutral party don't have have to have anything to do with the NFL and still look like you're doing the right thing and still can believe you're getting you're going to get the right yeah, ruling. Black. You know, Izzy, I thought the exact same thing, except I thought Goodell would leap on this opportunity to look like all of a sudden the good guy, right? He looks at this, this six-game suspension. He listens to the public reaction to it, doesn't like what he's hearing. The trial balloon is up. Now it's been. Now he shoots it down, and he says, we're going back to the indefinite suspension for a year. So talk me through this, for Pablo Torre. If there's an appeal... Is Watson available to play for the Browns to start the season? The suspension gets delayed, and then how does that play out? Yeah, Tony, there's a whole timeline here that involves the NFLPA taking this to federal court, seeking an injunction, and all of this has to be meted out inside of the actual criminal justice system or the actual legal system, which is, of course, not what this is in the NFL, which is a sham justice system that is okay. being treated as a real one because the real one did not give us accountability in any sense on the case of Deshaun Watson. So what is happening here? Roger Goodell is saying, I'm not going to appeal this case to myself. That is not exactly <laughs> a, uh, you know, brilliant bit of jurisprudence, but what it is is what a term that is he used, which is a public image decision. Yeah. And for that I reason, sense that. I clever, sense you all believe obvious. this is a PR move by the league. Yeah. Fact is, we're still deep, deep in the woods here before we find out anything about what's going to happen. In this case, we'll move on. Buy or sell two, latest on Paige Becker's ACL tear. Oh, this is brutal. It was in a pickup game. Surgery will be tomorrow. She'll miss UConn season. And it adds to her injury history and could lead to an interesting decision for her. Red shirt or, because she's now of age eligibility, entered the WNBA draft. Kevin Black is on what position is Paige Becker's in right now? Uh, she's in that position, and she should take the take the NBA draft, take the money, and run. Do not do not think about this. In men's basketball, we always make that decision, right? 
go with the money. Um, unfortunately, women are not treated the same. They can't do a one and done in college, so they have to wait until they age into the draft. I think that's unfair. Change that rule. Israel Gutierrez? Yeah, well, she can sort of take the money and stay with NIL and just have this sort of redemption story. And UConn, not really ever the underdog here, right, can have this real uh, sort of recovery story and redemption story going in the next year. And if she wins a championship, it will be her first, et cetera. It'll be a great story. So I, I could see her staying for sure, especially when you consider the WNBA salaries not exactly for She hasn't taken the stance where she's trying to leave college early to go to the WNBA just yet and I feel like after seeing what she wrote on her Instagram that some little kid out there who might have torn their ACL or had a major surgery needs her sort of you know story to give a boost to show it is possible that the comeback is sweeter than the setback I feel like she's gonna end up staying in college she's got to win that first national championship and she's made seven figures close to it already an NIL mm. deal she doesn't need to turn pro to make that money yet she can continue Pablo to Torre. do that at college well, I think two things are true. Number one, that her story is now the story of injury, right? She missed 19 games, same leg. In December of 2021, this is now what is defining her college career. But as for her pro career, like, I don't think she's going to make more money in the WNBA than she is making through NIL, seven figures has been established, than she is in college right now. And for that reason, I think the calculus for a female basketball player is very different from a man. Kevin, I'll give you a last word on this. I was just going to say, I mean, I, I think she could make more as a pro. And the thing about the NIL, NIL is money you make on your own. It's not a salary that you're making for the money that you make True. for all the coaches and, and all the What's been reported, though, it's, it's not comparable to what a WNBA salary is. What did we just talk about with Brittany Griner? Something that wasn't said in that conversation. She was in Russia overseas because of the situation of the American basketball player and the WNBA salary. We're going to move on. Buy or sell three. Alabama's rebuilding year. That's what Nick Saban called last year. SEC title, a loss in the championship game, a rebuilding year. Israel, you asked for a new segment recently. Flex or troll. So, flex or troll. <laughs> this is actually something that people accuse me of often. This is a humble flex because it was a rebuild. You lost some pretty strong caliber players to send the skill positions the year before, and you come back, and yeah, you're with a, a freshman quarterback. You're not supposed to do all that. Boom, national champion. You humble flex, Courtney. Rebuilding year, but it's also you believe in the humble flex? I don't know whether he's trolling us or not. I just think that this is his reality, and he's speaking to it. They lost 10 players to the draft from that 2020 team last season. They lost Steve Sarkeesian to Texas. They lost their offensive line coach or special teams coordinator. So, yeah, in theory, it was a rebuilding year. They just happened to end up in the national championship at the same Pablo time. Flex or troll? This is Saban just being himself. He famously said, after winning the title, damn game cost me a week of recruiting. The one who is trolling us is Izzy. Because I've seen him, Tony, on a train track. There is nothing, literally nothing humble about that flex. Hey, Kevin Black stuff. Alabama ah, does not rebuild. They're always built. Yeah, Come yeah, on, yeah, stop yeah, it. Yeah, I love yeah, Saban, yeah. though. He gives us material. All right. Here's your Gutierrez. Can you give us that humble flex right now? Just give, give us a little humble flex. I mean, I've got sleeves and stuff. Okay, okay. that's it, like Pablo <laughs> and Courtney. Showdown. <laughs> Too many. <laughs> Too many. All of Famers may be playing in tonight's game. Jacksonville, as a franchise, will send their first to Canton this week. It's, it's Tony Baselli. So tonight, the Hall of Fame game and preseason game number one, Jaguars Raiders. No Trevor Lawrence, no Travis Etienne, no Derek Carr, no Devontae Adams. Courtney, <laughs> what are you watching for? Watching for those backup quarterback battles. Just ask Kyle Orton. Careers can be birthed out of the Hall of Fame game. It happened for him in 2005. Mm. Rex Grossman gets hurt in the preseason. And because Orton had a great game in that Hall of Fame game, he ends up winning the backup job. So Jake Luton, Kyle Sloter, I'm watching for those. Backup quarterback battle. How about you, Pablo? Can I just pass on this, Tony? Can I pass on asking Kyle Orton anything? Is that really how we're selling this game? I have to go back in time to ask Kyle Orton something about a okay. bunch of guys right. that I, I just don't know who these people are. No, Courtney, you're not. Right. Okay. Courtney clearly does. I have no idea who these backup quarterbacks and, are. You gave me a, a personal answer there. I, I will reward that. I asked, um, what are you watching for? Not what am I watching for? If Courtney's watching for that and could talk, I mean, that was in a FaceTime's worth of answer there. I'll give her points for that. We'll move on. Jordan Alvarez. Not